This is David or Dave, your tech-savvy host or inventor, and I welcome you again to my YouTube channel. I decided to create another additional playlist where I will be basically just uh, adding videos that serve as a sort of a video history on my battery restoration or rejuvenation process or attempts of the ROF. The playlist uh, has already been named accordingly to my wishes or my catering, my demand. Of course the title is uh, long and complex, but I have also added a much more uh, informational or uh, detailed description of the ROF so you will know what the playlist as such serves, even though the title is very revealing. Now let's go to this battery over here. So I connected the ladder to the Aussie circuit on the, I think it was the 8th of January. So now it has almost passed 14 days and it's time that we look how we are with the rejuvenation process. The first thing that we're going to measure is the voltage on the battery using my digital multimeter, Voltcraft VC404. Now the voltage on the ladder has risen by one volt because I think uh, the first time that we uh, attach the battery onto the Aussie circuit and as you could say a uh, sulfated state the voltage as such was at around 6.2 6.23 volts so now after almost 14 days it has gone up by one volt so that is a very good sign because as you can see here on the label of the battery uh, the highest voltage to which you can charge this battery is seven and a half volts and I'm just beyond the cycle use parameter so I would consider this battery is restored but we'll see later on in the video when we will attach a couple of loads to it. Now I'm going to uh, disconnect the battery from the Aussie Callanan circuit and I'm going to wait a little bit uh, because the voltage will probably begin to drop and then we'll have uh, another reading at which level does it stabilize. This is completely normal. As the voltage on the battery is nearing its, you could say, stabilization limit, so the level at which the voltage will stop dropping and it will stabilize, I'm going to mention or discuss a few things that I haven't um, brought to your attention when I made the video on this Aussie Cannon and circuitry and when I discussed a little bit about this battery that I was trying to rejuvenate or restore. So after the chemical part of the restoration, uh, after the voltage tripled from the initial uh, half a volt to 1.5 volts, I don't have uh, a charger for these 6 volt batteries so I had to improvise how to try to boost uh, the voltage on the battery. So the first thing I did was uh, I attached the battery to one of those three and a half watt USB uh, solar panels. I'll probably add a link to that in the description box of the video so you can order yours. And I had it connected onto that um, solar panel for probably either it was eight or ten hours because you know in the winter times we have very little effective light so Basically from, you could say, sunrise to sunset, even though at that particular day uh, it was cloudy, overcast, I think it was even raining, but nevertheless. So I'm going to show you uh, the solar panel. So this is this one, the 6 volt, but you know, you could say USB solar panel. It has this uh, female standard uh, USB uh, A-type female socket and goes in here and this is the front side so this is it and this custom cable is the other side of the necessary connection that you need to establish with the battery here you have your spade terminal crimp connectors and this is another female USB uh, connector as well and then I bridged everything with one of these so very handy, very improvised, but you know, it worked. After I have disconnected the battery from the solar panel, the voltage on it stabilized, so it was somewhere between three and a half and four volts, 
which was pretty decent but I said well how can we push this even further so I attached the battery uh, through that custom cable that you've seen previously uh, to one of those uh, AC wall USB chargers you know for charging your smartphone for instance so I used that charger as well to try to uh, add a little bit of more energy into the battery I had it connected I think a couple of hours five six and uh, the voltage after I have disconnected uh, the charger from the battery uh, it was at around I think five and a half volts and I said well great maybe I can use this battery wrong I'm recording this uh, video uh, the next day from here onwards well anyways when I try to attach a very small a load tester onto the battery the voltage went from those five and a half or ish volts straight back to zero volts and I used one of these things uh, this is basically a DC motor that has been salvaged from one of those um, optical drives I think it was a CD-ROM or one of those CD or DVD burners for the desktop computer so this one in particular runs somewhere between uh, 1 and 4 volts and its consumption is around I think either it is 68 milliamps or 60 milliamps so that would be an equivalent to let's say 3 5 millimeter uh, white LEDs that are wounded or connected in parallel considering that each one has roughly 20 perhaps 25 milliamps of consumption so this is a very small load tester um, I can show you you would just remove this cap and you would then add your CD here and the cover would slide down and then this motor would then spin the compact disc at a certain velocity and then the read head uh, on the unit would read uh, the contents of the CD or DVD yeah. So this one is very handy also for those experiments. But like I said, uh, the voltage on the battery went from uh, 5.5 to 0 volts and it couldn't power something as small as this. So the voltage on the battery is never a good indicator whether the latter is healthy. You should always try, you know, with small increments, first using a small load tester, then gradually moving up to a bigger one to test whether the battery can uh, work as such. Uh, so now of course we're going to try first uh, with this very small motor to see whether the battery can drive it this time perhaps. So we're going to attach this and then we'll see what is the result. All the while we'll be monitoring the voltage. I have uh, adjusted the scenery a little bit. I have disconnected the, or moved the battery and the multimeter away from the Aussie circuit so that you'll have a much better clear view on the action. All right, let's give it a go. <laughs> All right, apparently this works. Sure that you can hear it as well as see it, but the motor spins with no problem. And the voltage drop on the battery is very minimal, very normal, at least to my observation. Let's see if I can uh, slow it down. So, apparently. This patient has been really brought back from the dead. Uh, so now I'll try something different. Again, still using this motor. Now I will place on this coupling on the motor or connector, saddle also if you want to call it, one of my own textured uh, plastic polycarbonate CDs. And this will be sort of a representation of an additional load and we'll see how the motor handles uh, this and how is with the voltage drop on the battery
so no problem also using this I love uh, the, the way how it sounds like a jet or something so the battery also has no problems uh, driving something like this of course the voltage drop on the ladder is uh, much more notable but still within uh, reasonable limits So great, now we'll try a medium load. Now we're going to attach one of these very ancient bulbs. This is basically a bicycle uh, bulb. It's so uh, the voltage is, or uh, well, the specification is six volts and two four, uh, four watts. So 400 milliamps. So this is quite a significant load and we'll see how can the battery handle something like this. All right, let's see. No problem lightening this bulb as well. So this is almost, you know, half an amp and the bulb is nicely illuminated. Uh, of course, the voltage drop is according, but you know, nothing drastic. Well, let me just permanently connect it. Yeah, so look, no problem. You know, if uh, the voltage would have dropped to immediately uh, to, let's say, 6 volts, that would have been, you know, questionable uh, whether the state of the battery is in a good condition. But as you can see on the screen on the multimeter, the voltage is, you know, dropping or uh, staying within normal limits when you attach a load to it. So there aren't any dramatic uh, uh, fallings very normal so that's it for the last test uh, we're going to use a very uh, high load again here I have another classical uh, light bulb this one is uh, I think it's from I don't see the manufacturer, but it is uh, 12 volts, 21 watts. So this will be probably pulling more than one amp. So we'll connect this. First, we're just going to connect it in this way so that we'll uh, see what is the voltage drop. And then we're going to measure the actual current that is flowing uh, through this bulb. All right, let's connect it. All right, it's lightening up adequately. Of course, the bulb isn't fully uh, illuminated, but nevertheless, you know, even if we observe the voltage drop, it's not drastical, you know. So this is also a good sign. And this is, of course, you know, the last uh, load tester that I'm going to use in this video tutorial. So uh, if you manage to stay with me this far you've pretty much reached the end so now we'll uh, uh, make the necessary connection so we can uh, measure the amperage or the current draw on this light bulb I have disconnected the end side of the positive or the red test probe lead of the plus uh, terminal of the battery I have also moved the black alligator clip away because we won't be using it for this part and I have moved the input uh, connector from the plus test probe lead one notch up on the unit and I have also moved the or positioned the knob in the 10 amp measuring DC current range I'll zoom in on the multimeter so you can have a look Now let's see what's the consumption. 
So as you saw very quickly, it started with one and a half amp and then it dropped to one to 1.3 and then it stabilized at around 1.2 amps. So this is pretty much three times of the medium load that I used, which was at around or very precisely 400 milliamps. But you know, uh, the battery has no problems handling even this kind of load. So that's it. So we have reached the end of this video proof in the first one of its kind on my battery rejuvenation, restoration, reconditioning attempts or overall process as such uh, for this particular battery that you see over here, the 6 volt, 4.5 amp hour one. So we have uh, seen throughout the video that the battery can hold or accept something as low as 60 milliamps of load and then much more greater load of almost half an amp, 400 milliamps and it can also handle this large bulb over here which stresses the battery uh, initially of one and a half amp and then it stabilize, stabilizes at around 1.2 so sadly I cannot uh, show you the insides of the battery you know for instance if I was to remove this plastic top cover and uh, remove those three uh, rubber uh, caps that are uh, connected onto the each of their respective portholes. I can like show you the insides of the battery in terms of so that you could see the electrodes or the plates, their color more importantly. I would probably need one of those endoscopic cameras for something like that. So sadly uh, I cannot show you that. But nevertheless for something uh, like a reference if the electrodes or the plates in your battery are in any way like whitish or grayish in color that means uh, sulfation or sulfidization. No. However the uh, color of the electrodes or the plates in this battery are in a nice light or darkish brown color so that is a good sign that the battery doesn't have a sulfation problem anymore. It might still have some other uh, perhaps structurally related problems uh, there might be some micro fractures on the plates but that will be of course determined later on so for the first part as such uh, the battery has been properly restored especially considering how I got it and what state it was but to determine the actual capacity of the ROV so whether the battery still has those uh, 4.5 amp hours or 4500 milliamp hours I'll have to use the services of one of those uh, my USB power monitors or power testers uh, you've seen the video um, on one of those that I did when I was testing a 12 volt battery if you haven't looked it up in the next video that I'll be recording or notifying you we'll be going through the results of the other battery that I'm trying to rejuvenate the 12 volt one um, that is connected onto K Wall Raven circuitry so we'll be looking at that, whether I had success in that battery as well. But other than that, if you found this video interesting, stimulating, if you learned something new, if you want to command me, if you want to just simply add something to the video that is still useful or not, leave all that in the comment section below, which is open and I, open, and I invite you to a civil, polite discussion. Other than that, reward me with a like button, share and subscribe for more battery restoration videos. This is David. Have a great day.